All right. So our next speaker is uh, Sean Lynch. Sean is uh, head of platform at Dropbox. And when I actually, when I was asking Sean what he's going to be talking about today, what I heard him say to me was, here are the craziest things people are doing with drugs. What he meant to say, or what I was supposed to hear was, here are the crazy things people are doing with drones. So we got a little bit of confusion backstage, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's Sean. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean. I'm head of platform at Dropbox. Uh, a little bit later today, I'm going to be talking about uh, platform, mobile productivity, Dropbox. Uh, but I figured it was early, probably needed something a little bit more high, high energy than just productivity use cases. So I figured, why not just get together and watch a bunch of YouTube videos about drones and not drugs? Uh, I got a little excited with iMovie on the plane. Um, so we're not talking about these sorts of things, the crazy war machines. We're talking about these little guys, quadcopters, consumer drones, run anywhere between a couple hundred and a couple thousand dollars. They're remote controlled. They tend to have cameras like GoPros. We've got pretty advanced technology. That's image stabilization. This is a DJI Phantom. It's one of the most popular models, but they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, this is a Dragon Flyer. It's actually made here in Canada, and it's one of the most popular models with law enforcement in the States for whatever reason. But as I said, all shapes and sizes, this little handheld one, it does actually still have a camera on board. Uh, what's really fascinating about the space is that there's a ton of DIY. People 3D printing frames, using Arduinos for flight controllers, making them out of really anything, including, favorite example, chocolate. Seriously, this is a flying chocolate quadcopter, so it has to be included in a presentation of crazy things people are doing with drones. In the video, she does try and eat it at one point. I didn't include that. Um, I got really excited about drones during the Russian pro election protests in 2011 when I saw this guy, that's a DSLR being uh, floated above the crowd taking aerial pictures. And it's shown up in a lot of different places since then because it's portable, because you can take it anywhere. So documentary filmmaking, for example, this is in remote mountains in Pakistan, and you can get really incredible shots, really high resolution shots at really low, see how close they are to the people there, um, but still get the like spectacular shots that you expect from kind of like a National Geo uh, type of shot. And so Hollywood loves it. Uh, same reasons. It's cheap. You can get close shots. They're one of the biggest proponents of changing the FAA regulations. But because it is consumer, you can take videos of anything, including your frat party. Uh, I don't know why you would want, but if you want to capture it, sure enough. Um, and you can take them anywhere. This is actually shot in Newfoundland. Somebody decided to shoot the gap with their drone. And it's kind of incredible that you can do shots in all sorts of situations. This is Fukushima in the aftermath a couple of years later, um, some of the devastation. And this is Angus, Ontario, just a couple of weeks ago when a tornado hit immediately afterwards. You can see the fire trucks in the background. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. So you, you can also fight back against nature. This is the goose buster in Ottawa. Uh, it's chasing geese away from the beach so that they don't poop everywhere and po actually poison things. Um, but that high aerial shot is really attractive for a ton of situations. Um, this is surfing in Hawaii. And that, that shot is especially exciting in, in sports. So during the, the Winter Olympics, these past Winter Olympics, you can see a drone in the background there. Russia was actually using drones to get some of the shots. Um, and there are two, count them, two Kickstarter projects right now now with drones that will automatically follow you during whatever sort of uh, outdoor ex exercise you would like, um, just based on your phones. Um, so we're starting to see it in professional uh, sports. This is UCLA. They actually use drones to film their practices. So you get the plays above, uh, above the scenes. They record them afterwards. And actually, uh, during the World Cup this year, the French team accused another team of using drones to spy on their practices in order to understand some of their techniques. Really. <laughs> Really incredible stuff. Now, you've all probably heard about Amazon's delivery. There's a number of companies that are playing with it right now. This is Coca-Cola, actually, in Singapore, doing a commercial about drone deliveries. It's Coke. It's a little bit tame. So if that's not your speed in Vegas, you can actually get drone bottle service. You have to spend $20,000 in order to get bottle, bottle service by a drone. But in your fake beach time, you can show off with your friends. That's a little bit uh, upscale for me. I'm a little bit more of a beer person. Um, so. In uh, Wisconsin, they're delivering beer or, well, faking delivering beer out to your ice fishing shack. I think that just hits home based on my Saskatchewan upbringing. Um, 
But there's all sorts of crazy use cases uh, that people are experimenting with and getting all sorts of interesting shots. For example, this, this person is doing persistence of vision, vision skywriting with a drone. So you can write in air. And of course, what you would immediately do with this is propose to somebody. Um, that's the right way to impress your girlfriend. Uh, if you're particularly lazy, uh, this is an example of what it might be like to have a drone walk your dog. Um, <laughs> It actually looks like the drone is being walked by the dog. Uh, Japan purveyors of all things crazy are doing synchronized performance art with drones. That's a thing that is happening. Nobody was injured in this one either. Um, and this is one of my favorites. This is a drone in an active volcano erupting. And I thought this couldn't be topped. I thought this was the greatest thing. But just last week, a uh, gentleman drove his drone into the middle of a fireworks display um, with spectacular results, almost actually losing it to a firework there, um, but really, really incredible shots. Uh, I'm personally really fascinated about this stuff. As I mentioned, I'm actually going to be talking about nothing drone related this afternoon, but if you want to answer, ask any questions of me about drones or about productivity as well, I'll be around. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs>